Today we're starting Trig Unit 2. Trig Unit 2 is about inverse trig functions. So Trig Unit 1 was about finding trig ratios or ratios based on an angle. Inverse functions give you the ratio and you have to find out what angle has that ratio for that particular um, trig function. Today we're going to start, this is day one, part one, so I'm breaking it into two parts. We're going to figure out what inverse trig functions are a little more specifically, and then we're going to find them for the special triangles in quadrants one through five, or one through four, sorry. So inverse trig functions give angles whose values are equal to the value of the trig ratios. All that means is the return value from a trig function, what do you get out of an inverse trig function is an angle. What do you put into it? What do you uh, what's the input parameter? It's the ratio. And how are they specified or written? Well, you have a couple different ways. So inverse sine function is, looks, may look like this. So it's x is equal to inverse sine of theta, or x is equal to arc sine of theta. And what that means is it's the angle whose sine is equal to x. So this would be your ratio, and this is the angle that has that ratio. The inverse sine is going to give you this is what you're going to get back from the function. That's, um, that's the answer to, that fu to a function. It's an angle. So the example, we know that sine of 90 degrees is 1. So it, remember, we have it. It's quadrantal. So we have 0, 1, sine, and the hypotenuse is equal to 1. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. 1, one over 1, it's 1. If we wanted to turn into an inverse trig function, we would say sine of theta is equal to 1. And we would want to, you to define or tell me what theta has to be. So sine of th theta equals 1 is the angle whose sine is equal to 1. And you would give me back the value of 90 degrees, for example. Inverse sine of theta is also equal to all co coterminals of 90 degrees. So uh, if I asked you for the inverse sine, um, well, Actually, if the sine of 450 degrees, is that right, is also 1. So an angle whose sine is 1 would also be 450. It would also be a negative 270. So you could add infinitely 360 to this, and it would be a proper answer to this question. So we kind of have to restrict how far we want you to go with your answers. And that's why in the first slide, you you saw today, we're only going to be working in quadrants 1 through 4. That means basically our range is going to be from 0 degrees to 360. So we're not going to ask you for all coterminals or for additional coterminals. Tomorrow, is that's how, what we're going to do. We're going to be adding coterminals, more coterminals, to our answers. And as I show you here, 90 plus 360 is 450. 90 plus 720, we can go on and on and on. All of these would be correct answers to the, to the question, sign of what angle gives us 1. These are all proper answers. So how do we, the other inverse functions look similar. So inverse cosine of theta or, or arc cos. Inverse tangent or arc tangent, inverse cosecant or arc cosecant, inverse secant or arc secant, and then inverse cotangent or arc coat. So e these are these are the two ways that you can specify each of those functions. All right. So if we want to find an inverse value for a special triangle or quadrantal. First, we want to define the ratio based on the problem that you're given. So that means opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent, etc. Um, and you'll know when I give you the problem, because it will tell you sine, cosine, trig, or tangent, etc. Then you're going to find the triangle with that ratio. So based on the ratios that you're given in the problem, you're going to kind of backtrack. You're going to work backwards to figure out which of the special triangles or which of the quadrantal angles does that have to be. And then we want to find the quadrants that has that trig ratio. So if it's a positive ratio, you're going to look in the positive quadrants. If it's a negative ratio, you're going to look in the negative, ratio, uh, negative quadrants. And, base, and remember, 
I don't know if you need this, but we're talking about all students take calculus. So this tells you where the different functions are positive. So today we're going from 0 to 360, and if you'll notice from this, each trig function has two positive quadrants and each has two negative. So if it's not a quadrantal angle, you're going to have two answers today, two positive, either the two positive or the two negatives. We're going to use the reference triangle then to find the angle measures and then convert to radians as ne if necessary. And you'll know I want radians if the range I give you um, is in radians. So this will make more sense when I give you the example. Find the values of theta with zero between with theta between 0 and 360. So since I'm giving you the range is in degrees, that means your answer is in degrees. Okay, so what function are we being given? So inverse sine of theta has to be the square root of 2 over 2. So this is a little bit interesting because well, let's start through the process. First of all, which sides are we looking at? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to draw a triangle, and we want an opposite of square root of 2 and a hypotenuse of 2. Well, we don't have any special triangles with an opposite of square root of 2. So what we have to remember is we derationalize, or we rationalize this. So in order to figure out what the, if you can't automatically do it, and some of you know there's special, special triangles well enough that you can figure out that this is a 45 degree triangle, but you want to derationalize. How do we do that? Well, we're going to put the, the radical in the denominator. And then we basically replace this number with the radical. Sorry. So the square root of t the 2 in the denominator becomes the square root of 2. And then whatever's left over, if you remove this, is left in the denominator. And if you don't have anything, then it's just 1. So we derationalized it, in essence. And now we, have, we see that this is our opposite. This is our hypotenuse. So we're going to have a and I actually did not draw this properly. This is going to be um, 1, 1 square root of 2. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we found our reference, our triangle, our reference angle. Now we want to find the quadrants. How do I know whether it's positive or negative? We look at the sign. I need to erase this now. We look at the sign of the ratio you're given. This ratio is positive. There's no negative sign in front. So we're going to look for the positive quadrants for sign. And if we look at this, it's going to be quadrant 1, because all of them are positive, and then quadrant 2. Quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 have the positive sign ratios. So if we look at that, we've got a 45 degree angle here and a 45 degree angle here. So what's this angle? Well, this is going to be 180 minus 45, which is 130. Whoops, I'm sorry. This is not right. It's 1 and 2. So obviously, this one is just 45 here. And this one's going to be 135. Convert to radians if necessary. We don't need to because we're given our range in degrees. So our answers are just 45 degrees and 135 degrees. So if you know your special triangles well, this should be easy. If you don't, it's going to be a struggle. All right, next example. Find the value of theta with theta between 0 and 2 pi for cosine of theta is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. So first of all, you'll notice this time the range is in radians. That means your answers need to be in radians. The second thing to notice is this one has a negative ratio, so we're going to be looking for the quadrants where cosine is less than 0 or negative. All right, so first of all, define cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means this is adjacent over hypotenuse. Draw our triangle. Our adjacent is square root of 3. Our hypotenuse is 2. 
So this is going to be a 30 degree reference angle or 30 degree triangle. And now where is cosine negative? Well, all students take calculus, so it's positive here and here. That means it's going to be negative in the other two, which is going to be here and here. So it's negative in two and three. And that's what I have here. Now if I draw my triangles, this is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees. And when I, even though the range is radians, I do everything in degrees up until the very last step where I need to give my answer and then I do my conversion because I don't really think in radians. So this angle is going to be 180 minus 30, which is 150 degrees. And this angle, you get a different color here, is going to be 180, can't see that, can you? Uh, let's have a better color. 180 plus 30, which is equal to 210. So our two angles are 150 and 210. And now I'm going to convert them to radians. So I know that, and I told you this, I don't know if you know, remember this rule, I know that pi over 6 is equal to 30. 150 is 30 times 5, so it's going to be 5 pi over 6. Did I say pi, pi, uh, pi over 6 is 30? Okay. And then 210 is going to be 7 times 30. So it's going to be 7 pi over 6. So the answer then, these, and I'm sorry these don't come out, 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Those are going to be your two answers. Next example. So we're back in degrees. Answers are going to be in degrees. Dispe uh, find the value of theta where theta is between 0 and 360 for inverse cosecant of theta equals negative 2. So cosecant is hypotenuse over adjacent, opposite, sorry. And it's a ratio, so if we don't have a denominator, presume the denominator is just 1. So it's going to be a negative 2 over 1. And again, these lines don't turn out very well. So I'm going to draw the triangle that has hypotenuse of 2 and an opposite of 1. It's going to give me, again, a 30-degree triangle. Notice our ratio is negative, so we're going to look for the negative quadrants for cosecant, which are going to be the negative quadrants for sine. Sine is positive here and here. That means sine is going to be negative here and here in 3 and 4. And now we're going to draw our triangles. Whoops, that's a terrible triangle. Sorry. Well, good enough. This is 30. This is 30. So this angle is, again, going to be 180 plus 30, which is 210. And this angle is going to be, this one goes all the way around. Now let's do this. And it's going to be 360 minus 30 which is 330. So here are my two solutions. And I'm asked for the answer in degrees. So your answers are just going to be 210 and 330. All right, I think this is the last example. Find the value of theta between 0 and 2 pi. So that means answer in radians. Inverse tangent of theta is 0. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we don't really know what the adjacent is, but we know the opposite is 0. We'll just presume if you have a 0, you're going, it's going to be 0 over 1. So what angle, what reference angle do we have for an opposite that's 0 and an adjacent that's 1? Well, it's going to be on our x-axis. This one here, well, actually, yes. So it can be actually either of these, right? So my answer is actually not quite correct. So tangent of 0 is quadrantal angles, and it's going to be 0. Oh, I do have the right answers. At 0 and 1, 0 degrees and 180 degrees. If we convert those to radians, it's going to be 0 and pi.
So you don't necessarily have two angles for um, quadrantals, for instance, if it was tangent equals negative 1, there's only going to be one, and it's going to be right here actually, there's only going to be one angle which is 270 that has a negative 1 tangent. No, actually that's not it. That's going to be a 45 degree angle. But um, if I said, uh, adj not adjacent, if I said cosine of theta equals negative 1, you're going to get pi only. So there's not always two angles. Occasionally there's only one, so just be careful. All right. I think this is one that I want you to do. So you should work through this and make sure in class you have the right answer. And then your, com your homework here, you're going to do the worksheet problems 1 through 12. Those are the problems that want answers in the range between 0 and 360. Bring any questions to class.